Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline, and today we're going to do a haul video, just a haul. We're not going to be running around outside, we're not going to be down in the basement. We are just going to talk about the items that I've picked up pretty much this past week. Now these items I got from auction houses, thrift stores, and a flea market. I think I have a piece or two. So grab yourself something to drink, let's get started. So if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture of my two or three carts when I was shopping the other day in Goodwill, and I found this mask. This thing is gorgeous. So this is all hand carved wood, genuine wood, and it's got like this plant material as hair. I don't know what kind of plant material this is. I hope it's plant material. <laughs> but I absolutely love finding these masks. This one might be from Ghana. I know that generally these masks are either South America or Africa, but I love picking them up. Now, the more wild the mask, the better it will do price-wise and sell-through. A while ago, I had a pretty crazy one, and if I remember correctly, it brought $85. I don't know what this one's gonna bring, and I did pay up for him a little bit, so normally I get these for about 4 or $5 a mask, and this one I paid $13 for. So I did go back and forth for a little while, but I said, you know what? He's too good. I love him. So I picked him up and two others. I'm going to grab those and show them to you. So here's the second one. It's a real round, like moon face. And again, I'm not sure where these are sold. This might even be like Pier 1 Imports, or it could be just for the souvenir trade. Again, hand carved. And I love the expression in these masks, so I will always pick these up. Now, right now in my store, I think I have three or four, and they're more of the elongated um, spear-shaped ones. I don't know if that's even the correct term for these. I do better with the ones that are round or the prior one I just showed you, you know, just the full face. And one more I have. Let me see if I can lift this one. Oh, going to make everything crash. I have so much before me on this table. And here is another one. I think this one might be Indonesia. So I always love finding these masks. Again, these are carved right in the country that they come from. And a few of them I have found with colorful painting on them. Those are usually from South America. But I just love finding these and I love selling them and I will report back on Instagram of what these bring. The next item is an art print. It's a foil art print that I found in Prussian Street Arcade. If you guys watched the Shop With Me video that I did, I think just prior to this video, I brought you along shopping in Prussian Street Arcade and there's a new vendor there. Forgive me, I forgot the name of the vendor spot and I found this foil print. Now, if you remember, I didn't originally, oh, the light's hitting it. I didn't originally pick this up because they wanted $24.95 for it. But one of you, Jill Vaughn, so thank you very much, Jill, said, hey, you might want to check comps on that um, foil print. It's from the 70s and see if it's something that you might want to run back and pick up. Now, I did check comps and I'm going to insert them here. So the active listings are showing that this can bring anywhere from $500 to $1,000. I don't think that's the case. But you know what? I loved it when I saw it and I was kind of sorry I didn't pick it up. So thank you, Jill, for encouraging me to pick it up. And I will report back again of what this brings. I don't think this is going to bring $500 to $1,000. I think people are just listing them for that price. So this is Michelle Emblem and you can comp her uh, foil artwork to see what I'm talking about, but just lovely. I did pay the $24.95, but I'm very happy to support a local business that I love, and I love finding items like this. Just stunningly beautiful. So the next item up is this little copper tea kettle. Again, this is hammered, but it's only hammered along the bottom portion of it, so I don't know if the camera is gonna be able to pick that up. And while this isn't a high profit item to sell, I love saving teapots or kettles like this. This is quite old. It has a wood handle and a wooden little knob that actually needs some repair. So somebody must have lost the original screw and they put it on with a nail. Finding a copper nail should not be, or a copper screw should not be that hard to do. And as you can see, it is a silver metal on the inside. 
So I said yes to this. It's in very good condition. Now with copper items, I don't clean them. I don't polish them. I leave them with the patina, I call it, that they have. I wouldn't have time to polish this anyway, but I think a lot of people want the older look because a lot of people are still decorating their houses in like farmhouse or country or something like that. So I said yes to a little copper tea kettle, $3.99 I paid for it. And I'm expecting probably, I don't know, 18 to 22 for it. But I'll report back on Instagram when this one sells. The next two items are copper again. These are little ship lanterns. And I believe these burn oil. And the way that I can tell that is when you open the top flue latch, let me see if I can do this without making a mess, because I haven't cleaned these yet. You can see the abundance of black soot. So if these were kerosene or something like that, I don't think this would have such a soot buildup. So I'm guessing that they're oil. I think these are put out by Penco, um, a company called Penco, and they are made in Hong Kong. When I see a made in Hong Kong uh, marking on it, I think 1950s, 1960s. So I have two nautical ship lanterns that probably burn oil, again, just a guess, one in red, one in green, and I expect these to bring probably $80 to $90. I'll keep them together for a pair. What did I pay for them? Did I take the stickers off? I might have, oh, there it is, $1.99. Could that be $1.99 each? So that was a great score. So if you find these little lanterns, you always want to check inside to see that the inner workings are good and how soot filled they are. These can be a thing to clean. Now, most likely, I will just open up the latch top and clean them outside just with a rag and then throw the rag out because they make a mess. But um, I think these are still very desirable and I was just thrilled to find them. So the next item that I want to talk about, I actually didn't purchase in a thrift store or an auction house or anything like that. This is a three chime doorbell that I actually found um, in my house and I'm doing some renovations right now. So down a rabbit hole we go. When I moved into this house and I first came to see it, I realized almost all of the fixtures in the house were the original fixtures. They were from the 50s. I think my house is built in 1951. And as I started taking off like the wall sconces, the toilet paper holder, the soap dishes, the doorbell, I realized that I was not going to throw this stuff out, that I was going to flip it on eBay. And I have sold every single piece that has come out of this house and made very good money because mid-century modern, we all know, is really a thing and people want the original parts. So I want to encourage you guys that if you ever take items out of your house and you have an older home, older even in the 70s, people are looking for these things. So this is, where's the cover? This is a written house doorbell. So this was my front doorbell. And anytime somebody rung the bell, it really sounded like church times. It was hysterical. I did paint the cover when I painted the room. So this was originally like that real antique yellow color. So that might hurt the price a little bit. I don't know, but it's in great working condition. This is going to bring probably around the $75 mark. So could I have thrown it out? Yeah, but why? It's great to just offer these things a new life in somebody else's house, make money on them, and it more than paid for my new doorbell. So a win-win all the way around, written house, three chime doorbell. The next item that I thought was a really good find and I was thrilled to get it is this, I believe this is styrofoam buoy. But the thing that I love about it is that somebody hand painted a Santa on it. You guys know I always appreciate, you know, other people's talent because I am the least talented person when it comes to artwork. I mean, stick figure is about as good as it gets with me. But this is really gorgeous. I don't see a signature. I did pay $3.99 in a thrift store and it does have Santa's list on it with names. So I thought that was great. This, this person, this artist did a great job. I'm gonna hold it a little bit closer to the camera so you can appreciate it. Now I did comp this and I didn't see any comps. It could be that I was probably spelling Bowie wrong, but a lot of times that happens because my spelling is so bad. I'll be comping something and I'll be like, huh, there's none of these online. And then I realize when I check my keywords that they're spelled incorrectly. Sometimes eBay can catch that 
that and they'll correct your spelling? Most times, no. So if you feel you have a common item or an item there should be more than yours on there, you always want to check your spelling, but look how good this Santa is. I'm going to get out of the shot. I thought he was fantastic. Again, $3.99. Because I didn't find comps, I'm not sure, but with a hand-painted artwork like this, I'm thinking probably $50. So that's probably where I'm going to price mine at. Next up is a pair of shoes. We're going to do a pair of shoes or two right now. These are Fry, and I'm going to show you the symbol for Fry so that maybe if you find Fry brand in the thrift store, you'll know what to look for. It's a little tiny mark, and it's usually on that part of the heel. Fry is a brand I love to find. I always make good money on Fry as long as they're in good condition. Most of the Fry shoes that I find are women's leather boots. Now, I don't find them too often, but when I do, they almost always bring over $100. These won't bring $100. This is a men's canvas and leather, I'm gonna call it like a ranger boot, but beautiful condition. Here is the branding again on the bottom so you can see the way Fry is spelled. F-R-Y-E. And what did I pay for these? I think I paid $9.97 for them. Did I take off the tag? Pretty sure I paid a little under $10. And for these, I'm guessing probably $60 to $65. So great find. Always look for fry boots. This next little bowl totally tricked me. I saw it sitting on a shelf and it did look a little bit different, but I don't have the ability to spot sterling silver just by eye. Sometimes my eye catches a uh, silver plate and thinks it's sterling or solid silver, and other times it's just a total guess. So this one turns out to be sterling, and as you can see, it's just like a little bowl that's maybe, I don't know, three inches by probably four inches across. This is a really good find. Now, if you find solid silver, I should say sterling silver, 9.25, that means it's 92.5% silver, and the rest is copper, I think, to give strength to the metal, because silver is quite soft, and it needs to you know, be a little bit stronger to hold its shape. It will always be marked with either 925 or sterling. So those two words mean that you have the genuine, it's not plate, it's not electroplate. It is as solid a silver as you can get. Just beautiful. And even though this is a little bowl, this will still bring really good money. I'm not sure what I'm going to get for this. Probably somewhere in the $30 range. I don't know what silver is bringing right now per ounce. And that does affect the pieces like this because some people buy on eBay or other selling platforms and they scrap it. They, they try to get in it at a much lower price and then they collect it and when they get a certain amount they just bring it to the scrapper, I guess. I don't even know where they bring them. I usually bring mine to the jewelry store, to my jeweler, because he gives me the best price if I'm not going to sell it by, um, by the piece. So this I'm going to put on eBay just the way it is. So in other words, I'm not scrapping this. So beautiful, beautiful bowl. I was thrilled to find it. What did I pay? $3.99. Next up, I found this elephant. I think it's an elephant. Kind of looks like a mouse. <laughs> is that a mouse? What is this? This is a conundrum. You know, I'm looking at it and it has a long, a long trunk but the rest of it looks like a mouse. I guess it's an elephant sitting. I don't even know an elephant from a mouse. This is not good. <laughs> Why do you guys listen to me? I expected this one to be signed. Very good weight. It's beautiful. The glass seems older, but the glass is very clear. I don't see any bubbles or marks, and I don't see any signature. So if you guys are recognizing this for the base, the base is unique. Would you leave a comment down below if you recognize, I mean, it could be Murano, it could be all the ones that we know, but I don't know who is making this. So um, I won't attribute it to anybody unless I'm really sure of the branding of the maker. But um, what did I pay for him? $4.99 and he seems older to me. I saw these two candlesticks, candlestick holders sitting on the shelf in a thrift store and right away I love them they're hand painted 
really nice size. It sounds like wood to me. These sound like they're made out of wood. I could be wrong about that. It could be the that it's a cast resin. I think this is wood. Very hard to tell. But $3.99 each, just beautiful. So I put them in my cart. I don't know who makes them. The felt on the bottom is a little bit old, not especially old. I'm going to guess these are probably 90s, early 2000s. Total guess. But for the $8 for the two, I'm thinking probably $60 to $65 I'll get for these. The next item or group of items that I wanted to talk about are belts. I think I always include belts in a haul too. This belt is totally beaded. Beautiful, beautiful belt with wood clasp ends. So the person puts the belt on and then hooks it this way. And these are made out of genuine wood. They're not a wood product. No marking on them, but a lot of the belts that I buy, I think more often have no maker's mark and I buy them anyway. Now I do like when they have a size printed on the leather. This does not have any size and the banding has stretched to it. So that's always nice. So with something like this, I just give one measurement from the tip to tip. I should say two measurements and how wide the beaded area is. But just stunningly beautiful. Any belt that has quality to it, I pick it up. It doesn't have to have the branding. And again, I sell hundreds and hundreds of belts. Belts are one of my all time favorite things to sell. And I always say as I grow older, like once I get to my 70s, I might just narrow down the fields that I am selling in and, and belts will be one of the things that I keep in my, in my regime, in my routine, whatever I want to say. I really like belts. Now here is another one. Does this have any branding? Let me just check it with my magnifying glass. I'm almost thinking this was just made, I want to say handmade, in like a specialty shop. Oh, it does have branding, I think. What does that say? Oh, it's kind of worn off. P-A-C-O, Paco, Bellet, it looks like. That could be something else besides a B, B-E-L-L-O-T. And it has the size, yay, 32. But look how gorgeous this is. Look at the beading on this. When you find a quality belt, one of the telltale signs, not always, is that the, um, the brads or the different hardware is actually riveted onto the belt. You can see how much care went into this. Double stitching, gorgeous beadwork. These medallions, I don't think they're genuine silver, but really nice quality. And what did I pay? $3.99. Belts falls into one of the categories that are still affordable in thrift stores. So I talk about this quite often because we all know that thrift store prices are just going up and up. So I zero in on things like lingerie, the linens, belts, eyeglasses, mm, what else? Sometimes jewelry. Jewelry has gone up a lot too. To be able to keep my buy-in costs low and make more profit. Belts is, again, so easy to ship. And once your eye learns quality of belts, other people will want them too, especially if it's a beautiful design like this. So that's belt number two. We have one more to do. I had three all together. Now this one's a lot simpler. It is just a pierced, a pierced belt or a laser cut. I imagine this is laser cut. And does it have a brand? $1.99 I paid. I imagine this one is just a mall brand. But I really liked it, and it looks to be genuine leather. See if there's anything under the Goodwill sticker. Made in India. That's all it says. Definitely leather, though. Really nice. $1.99. So what will I get for the belts? The first one that with the stretchy band, I'm thinking that's going to bring somewhere in the $40 range. This Western one is going to be above that. This is going to be the best profit. And then this last one, probably between $15 and $18, if that high, probably closer to the $15 mark. And the last hard good that I want to talk about is this cedar box. Whenever I see these boxes with the, I don't know if this is decoupage, I imagine this is a piece of heavier paper that's been glued onto it. I always say yes to these. These do well for me. There must be a name to a box when it has this decoupaged box, but I always pick these up. I believe this one is a jewelry box. And the thing I look for are the hinges are in brass, so it's a quality hinge. 
The joints are dovetail or mortar and tennis in, mortar and tennis. I don't know how to say that, I've forgotten. So that's what that looks like. Usually they are carved and then inside, got a little breast latch here, inside there's usually a mirror. So I paid $2.99, which was a great price, and this one's in great shape. Sometimes you're missing this little part of the latch that goes down over the locking mechanism. So I always um, am careful to look for that. Not that I wouldn't buy it without it, but it's great when you find it and it's all in great shape. So I said yes to a beautiful vintage cedar, I'm going to call it a decoupage box. Okay, so I have a few pieces of clothing to talk about. I've been trying to mix clothing into the hard good hauls because you guys are saying you want to see clothing again. I used to do full clothing hauls. And I don't know, the interest in the vintage hard goods was a little bit higher. When you're a YouTube creator, you really have to try to zero in on what your viewers want to see. So that's why I had stopped kind of altogether doing clothing hauls. Once in a while I throw one in, but now I'm trying to mix the two to please everybody. So this part of the video is just probably, I don't know, seven or eight pieces of clothing that I find interesting, labels I look for, and just in general items that I will make good money on. So the first one is this gown. I'm going to stand back with it. Now this one is vintage. I'm going to show you how I learned to tell vintage from modern ones because there still are a lot of kimono gowns or robes being imported into the United States. I like finding the vintage ones. I think they're nicer and I love when they're made of silk rather than cotton. This one is cotton. A lot of times an inner tag will tell you and almost always they do have a belt with them so you want to look for that. A kimono sleeve is a sleeve that's like a cutaway. Let me hold this better for you guys. It has like a square shape and then the underarm a lot of times is open. This is totally open for ventilation. And I'm going to show you the tag. So this one I paid $7 for in a thrift store. I'll just get rid of the tag. And I wanted to show you this is a brand and I have to research this again. I've forgotten what this is called, but this is what the label looks like. And on this tag here, it says size extra large, 100% cotton, keep away from fire, made in Japan. So that is a wonderful um, sign that when a kimono is made in Japan, it's extra good. It's better than it being made in China, actually. Um, machine wash, so they give the washing instructions. And then on the side, I think it was this one. No, it might have been one of the other ones. One of the other ones I had, had that the material was made in Japan, but it was assembled in the United States and it was a vintage one also. That was a more rare one. But again, this tag, I believe is the branding, this landscape here, and I will look that up to try to put that in my title. So what did I say? I paid $6.95. And off the top of my head, I'm thinking between 50 and 60. Now, if this one was silk and it was a gorgeous scene, a landscape, you know, cherry blossoms, all of the things that we think of with the beautiful Japanese culture, I would think it would bring over $100. But kimonos are always a yes if they're vintage and if they're made in Japan, always a yes. Even if they have a little bit of damage, I will still pick them up. This next item is a graphic t-shirt, men's graphic t-shirt from Mac Tools. And I thought that was really good. Max Vacancy Hotel and Cafe. It is not single stitch. You guys know I've shared a couple of times single stitch is the older vintage t-shirts where it was just one row of stitching. Most t-shirts, I don't know when they started, in the 80s I think, putting two rows. Yep, this one's got two rows of stitching. Still good, not as good as the single stitch ones. People are really still looking for those. But I thought the graphic on this Mac Tools was good. Price was even better, $350. I have not comped this. I'm going to guess maybe $22 to $24 for this. Next up is not a clothing item. It is a handbag, but I thought this is really good. It is very beaded and blingy. It has this big leather tassel. So pretty. This is Sharif. 
S-H-A-R-I-F. <laughs> I don't know why I need to spell everything. I thought this was really nice. Now, Sharif comps are all over the place. I don't even know if we say it Sharif. Sharif? Sharif, probably. And what did I pay? I paid $10 for it, which is very high for me for a handbag. But the leather was really nice. It's in beautiful, clean condition. And I thought somebody would definitely pay at least $30 for it. So I went ahead and grabbed that. And the last items we're going to talk about are these fisherman sweaters. I recently shared about this again. I think I've been talking about these the whole time I've been selling because I do well with these. These are sweaters usually made in Scotland or Ireland. A lot of times they're merino wool. The quality is beautiful, almost all of them. There's not one specific brand that I look for. There's quite a few brands in these types of sweaters. So this one is... Kilronan, Kilronan Marina Wool. So I picked this one up. It's a cardigan. Look how beautiful that is. Very thick, very warm. And this next one is B-O-N-N-E-R Ireland, hand loomed. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So this is called a cable knit. Fisherman, you know, you can picture fishermen long ago <laughs> in their wool sweaters. And what was this one? This one is another cardigan, Highland Home. Highland Home I might have shared with you guys before. I think I'm getting ready to list this one. I don't even know where I'm at in the listing process. I just, just work. That's all I do. I just try to keep going and uh, try to keep things organized, which right now, okay, down a rabbit hole we go. My house is a wreck. If you saw my house, you'd be like, is that Karen's house? Because we're painting. Lisa's helping me paint the bookshelves in the living room. And what else? All the closets are getting painted. And what else are we doing? There's a couple of projects. So when you paint the insides of all your closets, everything has to come out of the closets. And you know, it's not a huge house. So I am just stepping over piles with everything coming into the house from buying and then all of my stuff being out of the closets. It is a wreck and I cannot wait till the projects are done and everything can go back hidden away. I will be really appreciative for that, but um, I don't know how I went down that rabbit hole. But fisherman sweaters, I love cable knit. You always want to make sure that they're 100% wool. They're not acrylic. Do not pick up the fake fisherman sweaters that are acrylic. In my opinion, they don't sell, bring very high money. I've never seen an acrylic one, you know, that's really like pitted and pilly and no. You want 100% wool, a lot of times it's merino wool, and almost always it comes from Ireland or Scotland. Now there are some USA sweaters that are made beautifully, Ralph Lauren vintage sweaters, oh my gosh, gorgeous. And you can wear them as coats. Even if it's like a 30 degree chilly day, these sweaters keep you warm. All right, so that is my little, my little spiel about sweaters. I hope this haul wasn't too crazy for you guys. Leave a comment down below if you guys like me showing you hauls of things that haven't sold yet and then reporting back on Instagram for almost everything, what the items bring, or if you like me to show you what has sold and what kind of items brought good money. A lot of times I do high profit thrift finds and that's where I show those kind of items with screenshots. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Sorry for the chatty video today. I wanted to get a lot of this in to share with you guys what I'm looking for, what I'm finding, and what I'm selling. Thanks so much. Hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.